All right, joining me now, Rebecca Walzer and Mitch Rochelle. Let's start uh, with this social upheaval, right, that this bid has caused. And Rebecca, just, it's, it's, it's really maddening. Your thoughts on it all. Well, I think Elon has taken a big step forward, and you're absolutely right, Charles. He is putting all of his businesses online, and he knows that. And he even said this is not a money play. This is for the greater good of society. And you have to start to wonder who is it or why is it that these people are so afraid of what Twitter used to be, which was it used to be a free speech platform, and then obviously it's deteriorated from there. Why are they afraid of free speech? Why can't you argue your ideas in the public square and win if your ideas are winning? ideas what are we afraid of I, you know Mitch first and foremost I got to tell you I'm digging that rugged look okay retirement's doing you pretty well my friend <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just moments ago Twitter unleashing a poison pill uh, and, and this is another effort to keep uh, uh, Elon Musk at bay your thoughts on how effective that's going to be uh, it, it, it's it's right out of the playbook you hire very expensive you're an acquisition lawyers and they do things like uh, poison pills. One of them is this uh, mechanism where uh, any of the existing shareholders can buy up as much stock as they want, dilute the company because they're going to be buying it at a discount as a way to hold off Elon Musk. The question really is, is there a price at which the board uh, has to say yes? Because let's remember the board of fiduciaries for the shareholders. And if Elon Musk ups that $5, $10, it's pretty compelling. Uh, and they're going to have a hard time uh, saying no to that deal for whatever their reason is, whether it's ideology otherwise, because at the end of the day, I think the shareholders don't care as much about the content as they do the profits. You know, uh, to, maybe not the maybe not the, the board, but, you know, listen, I, I was in the stock before this all began. Uh, I was just kind of breathing a sigh of relief that it was almost break even, Rebecca. But, you know, <laughs> let's say Elon walks away. I'm being honest. I think this stock goes to 30 maybe even gets a two handle, goes to 20 bucks. The trajectory right now is awful. The business model exactly. is awful. Uh, you know, exactly. they, when they kicked uh, President Trump off, they had 195 million users. They got 213 now. It's not growing. TikTok will do more ad revenue dollars this year than Twitter and Snap combined. So, you know, to Mitch's point, the board has to consider this. Uh, and and, and they, don't they have to ignore all the other noise? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at a fiduciary obligation, your fiduciary obligation, this is where it's getting confused with ESG and all these things, Charles, and they're looking at the stakeholders instead of the shareholders. But your fiduciary obligation on the board is very clear. It is to do what's the best interest of the financial interest. These are investments for shareholders. They're investments. They're not, they're, you know, uh, this is what we prefer society to be like. Yeah. These are investments. They have to execute on what is best for the financial welfare of the company. And I am 100% with you. If Elon walks away, these fiduciary board members have a big problem. Because I'm, I'm, I'm saying that they should be sued immediately. Yeah, well, we have a stop loss at 44, so we might be out on Monday. You know, as I talk it around, <laughs> <laughs> listen, wish I got to 50 and just ran anyway early Monday, Friday morning, right? So I'm toggling around uh, yesterday, of course, looking at all the channels, and all I'm seeing is all this hate toward Musk. And the conversation then started to shift, though, and you started to hear him bring up Tesla, but it was a not so veiled threat to somehow harm the company, right? Maybe protest, we won't buy the Teslas. And obviously the aim is to sort of make Musk a, a sort of modern day version of Prometheus, if you will, Mitch, that you're gonna be punished over and over for this, not just, in a, not just by us, but we're gonna harm your jewel, right? We're gonna go after your company, Tesla. Would you be concerned as a Tesla shareholder? I don't think I'd be concerned as a Tesla shareholder. Um, the one thing I've learned about Elon Musk is his ability to polytask, not even multitask, polytask. He can run multiple companies at the same time. Uh, and I don't see him leveraging his stake uh, in Tesla to pay for Twitter in a way that would harm the shareholders of Tesla. Right, right. Um, and the cancel culture question you're asking, uh, I, if there's a human being who's not scared of that, it's Elon Musk. You know, it's interesting, too, because Kathy Wood just yesterday raised her target on Tesla. She's saying it's going to 4,600, 5 trillion market cap by 2026. So, uh, again, you know, this is what I'm worried about, Rebecca. Not necessarily Elon Musk having to sell his shares, but some sort of coordinated effort to boycott the product or the company. So, again, if he were successful on this, could it reach that lofty target that Wood has put out there? 
There's no doubt that there will be coordinated efforts on the left to target Tesla in every way they can. But you know, from the government perspective, you're absolutely right, Charles. The SEC yesterday and all these things. But you know, Elon has uh, tussled with the SEC before and done quite well, I might say. You know, when you go on Joe Rogan and you're doing certain things on live podcasts <laughs> that maybe the SEC doesn't like, uh, you know, you're going to get a call from the SEC. He's gone down this road before, so I don't think I'm, I 100% yeah. agree with Mitch. I don't think he's afraid of the federal government, and I think that this is a great. Uh, unveiling for us. Let's right. all see what this federal government does, because it reminds me of communism. You know, you're not going to let a business owner and the open market make a you know a bid for a hostile takeover, and and you're going to that's something that's concerning to you. There's no antitrust issues. They're completely different lines of uh, industry. So why why are they giving him this right. hard time? What kind of government do we have now? You know, it's interesting. I'm going to go on Joe Rogan one day and have a Diet Coke just to be different than everybody else. <laughs> all right, so let, let, let's switch to the country uh, um, at large. Uh, listen, we got mounting serious problems. In fact, Rebecca, I, I read where you were talking about the dollar. That's interesting because I also read a piece from a guy named Myrick uh, Chapman who says the dollar is never, never going to lose its reserve currency status. He actually compared it to the double offering Homer Simpson donuts uh, and, and the way the world keeps buying things from us. Like, do, are we missing something? Are, are we too cocky in the notion that the dollar and the United States will always be preeminent? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely we are. Listen, people do not understand, and I don't see how hard this is to understand. Since 1974, we have had a deal with OPEC and Russia to sell oil in dollars. And any regime or any government that's ever tried to go outside of that, they've basically been at war with the United States. This is us reaping our own situation because we basically right. pushed Russia out of SWIFT. We got all the private companies, MasterCard, Visa to come out. They had no alternatives. They did what they did, and it is upside down in the entire global petrodollar because we have China, India, and Europe now switching things all around so that they don't ha they can deal with buying their energy and it's outside of the US dollar and if we don't think Charles that this is going to have a massive impact then ask answer the question why did Jerome Powell say to Congress in March that the United States dollar does not need to be the sole reserve currency that was us getting prepared for what is coming it is coming wow uh, we've got to leave it there. Rebecca, Mitch, uh, enjoy. Have a fantastic weekend. I hope to see you guys real soon. Happy Easter, Charles. Happy Easter. You, you too. So